So let's talk a little bit about the substitution rule. So the substitution rule is essentially an inverse of the chain rule. So we have a function within a function or a composition, and that's like f of g of x. And what we'll need in order to take the antiderivative is g prime of x, okay, in order for us to take that antiderivative of f of g of x. So our big f of g of x is going to equal the integral of f of g of x times g prime of x, right? So if you kind of think about it, that makes sense because we know that f prime of x is equal to little f of x, okay? And utilizing the chain rule, if I take the derivative of f, big F of g of x, I'm going to get f prime of g of x times g prime of x, right? Which ends up giving me exactly this piece right here. So using that fundamental theorem of calculus, in order for me to go backwards, I'm going to need this g prime part. How we're going to do this analytically is with something called a u substitution. So let's suppose that we have the integral of f of g of x times g prime of x dx. And what we're going to do is we're going to substitute a u for g of x. So we'll let u equal g of x. And then thus, that means that du, our derivative with respect to u, uh, uh, with respect to x, excuse me, is going to be g prime of x dx. Okay? Now, so now what we have is we have the integral of f of g of x times g prime of x dx is just going to be the integral of f of u du. Well, since u is just a, just a, uh, uh, a value, right, okay, what we're going to get, or just a variable, we're going to get the antiderivative of f of u plus c. Then we can just resubstitute in u for g of x, and that'll give me the antiderivative of f at g of x plus c. Let's take a look at an example. So let's say, for example, I have x cubed over 1 minus x cubed dx, excuse me, x squared over 1 minus x cubed dx. Now, one of the things that I know about this is, is that with my traditional antiderivatives, I'm not actually going to be able to find um, the integral of this. I just don't have one that's going to like equate for x squared over 1 minus x cubed. On the other hand, the substitution rule is going to allow me to, to let this work. Okay. What I'm going to notice is I'm going to notice that the derivative of 1 minus x cubed is just going to be negative 3x squared. Right? And when it comes to use substitutions, we can deal with constants, but we can't deal with variables very well. Okay, so we're going to need the variables already there, but we can do some kind of like tricky arithmetic in order to get the constants in. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, well, we're going to let, well, first, let's notice that f of x is going to be equal to a 1 over x, and then our g of x is going to equal 1 minus x cubed. So when I use sub, I'm going to use sub for that g, g of x. Okay, so I'm going to let u equal 1 minus x cubed, and then du is going to equal negative 3x squared dx. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to notice that I have an x squared, and I have the dx here, okay, and those are going to be the things that I want to substitute for, but I don't have a negative 3. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to actually need to pull that negative 3 over. Okay, I'm going to make a, basically a transformation. So this is going to give me now negative one third du is going to equal x squared dx. And so that will end up being my substitution. I could substitute negative one third du in for x squared dx. And since when it comes to integrals, we can just pull out our scalars. This is not going to be such a problem. So let's transform our original integral. Our new integral is now going to be negative one-third du over u, and that's it. That's what we've got. So this is going to end up being negative one-third times the integral of du over u, which is just going to, simply going to be negative one-third natural log of u plus c. So now all I need to do is resubstitute in for u. This will give me negative one-third ln of 1 minus x cubed plus c. And that's now, that's my integral. That's what that equals. So what you see is you see that using the u substitution allows us to transform our integral into something that I can actually find an antiderivative for. Or it allows me to take my, find my function within the integral into something that I can find an antiderivative for and hence find um, the actual integral for. All right, let's try another one. So now let's take a look at this example. Um, 
And what we want to do is find the integral for 1 minus tan x secant squared x dx. And we, it, even if we kind of distribute it, we could still find the integral for secant squared x. That would just be tan x. But what about negative tan x secant squared x? There'd be no way for us to actually figure out that antiderivative. And so we have a problem. But the u substitution is actually going to help us out quite a lot. If we think about this, we're going to think about we've got um, our f of x is going to end up being just equal to x. So it's going to be the identity function. And our g of x is going to equal 1 minus tan x. Okay. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because if I kind of notice that the derivative of 1 minus tan x is just going to be negative secant squared x. So that's going to be where kind of if I think ahead, that's where my u substitution is going to come in. So we'll let u equal 1 minus tan x. And so then du is going to equal negative secant squared x dx. Now I look here. There's my du, right, except for the fact that it's got a negative on it. So I'm going to have to actually transform secant squared x dx into um, uh, into or negative secant squared dx um, into secant squared dx. And I'll just do that by moving over the negative. So this gives me that negative du is going to equal secant squared x dx. So this integral now, after my u substitution, is going to equal the integral of u, or the negative u, du, which is just simply going to be equal to negative u squared over 2 plus c, which is going to equal the negative of 1 minus tan x squared over 2 plus c. And that is my integral. So again, we pick the right u, okay? And basically, it's by observation. There's no algorithm for it, really. Um, it's just a matter of observing, noticing which one's going to be the main function, which one will be the derivative. Okay, We pick u as that function, the g of x. du is then going to be uh, the derivative of u. And then we make our du into a form that copies what our integral looks like. Okay, And then we go in, find the antiderivative. What about definite integrals? So for a definite integral, what we're going to have is we're going to have a slightly different process. We're going to still want to figure out what u is, and we're still going to want to do our u substitutions, but we've got to add a little step, right? But then in some ways, it also makes the integral a lot simpler. So let's let u equal in this case, and I think that we're going to let u equal natural log of x. And the reason why that it's going to be that case is because then du is going to equal 1 over x. That's a dx, by the way. 1 over x dx. So what I'm left with is this one here is going to equal um, u du. Okay, you can see that the 1 over x dx is the derivative, and the natural log of x is our function. So we have u du. Now the issue here is going to be with our bounds, okay, with our bounds. But it's actually a fairly simple issue to deal with. Our lower bounds is going to be evaluated for u now because our integral is in terms of u. So we're going to let we're going to substitute in. We're going to call it u of one, which will equal natural log of one, is going to equal zero. So that's going to be our lower bounds. So we're going to evaluate our lower bounds utilizing u as our main function, and then we'll go up to e, and so we'll find u of e is going to equal the natural log of e, which equals one. And so now those are our new bounds. And the thing about it is, is that now with the new bounds, I'm not going to actually have to resubstitute in for the natural log of x. Instead, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to have now, okay, u squared over 2, and it'll be evaluated from 0 to 1. Okay? And we do that because, or we change those bounds, because then what it does is it changes over the variable that we're using inside of the integral, and it allows us to actually make our, our solving much simpler. So this is now going to equal, okay, 1 squared over 2 minus 0 squared over 2, which equals 1 half. And that, in fact, is the value for our, our uh, definite integral. So the process here when we're working with definite integrals is to actually do our u substitution and then evaluate our bounds utilizing u, okay? u is a function of x.
right? So these guys here, one and E, they're functions of X or their values in X terms. And the zero and one, they're values in terms of our U terms, okay? And by changing them over, our bounds over to the U terms, we can then just evaluate the U squared over two. We don't need to resubstitute back in. So the resubstitution is only gonna really be used, okay? Or only needs to be used when we are doing the indefinite integral. So let's take uh, this integral, negative one to zero of the square root of one minus three x dx. So what we're gonna notice is that we can't actually take the um, integral of the square root of one minus three x without some substitution. So I'm gonna let u equal one minus three x, and I'm gonna then have du is gonna equal negative three dx. We'll notice that all I have is a dx, so that means that I'm gonna have to pull over the negative three. So this is gonna give me negative one third du is gonna equal dx. And then because I'm working with a definite integral, I'm gonna to need to evaluate u of negative one, which is gonna equal the square root of one minus negative, uh, one minus three times negative one, okay, which equals just two, because it'll end up being four, the square root of four. And then u of zero is gonna equal the square root of one minus zero, which just equals zero. So my new integral, excuse me, not zero, but it'll equal one. My new integral is now gonna equal the integral from two to one. Now be very careful about those bounds, it matters a lot. We're gonna have the negative one third is gonna be our scalar, and that we'll pull that out front, and then we're going to get now the square root of u du. This is then gonna equal negative one third, okay, times u to the three halves over two thirds, or excuse me, over three halves, evaluated from two to one. So this is now then gonna be equal to negative one third times, and we'll take two thirds, okay? And we'll multiply that then by um, two, uh, one to the three halves minus two to the three halves. This will then equal negative one third times, and then two thirds times one minus the square root of eight, which is then just gonna equal negative two thirds times one minus, and we'll just make this into two root two. And that's actually probably pretty sufficient. You can put it in your, your, uh, your calculator, but that's gonna end up being our, our, our integral, the R values for our different integral. So what did we do? We went in, we determined what u was based upon looking at our integral, then we found du, okay? And then we transformed that into what we could substitute back into the integral, okay? Then we found our bounds. We changed our bounds from values of x into values of u, all right? Then we evaluated the integral utilizing those new bound, uh, bounds of u. All right, so that's the idea of the substitution rule. The substitution rule is basically this. It is, we are going to get accustomed to and get really comfortable with, okay, um, figuring out what the function is within the function. What is the composition, all right? And then we're going to utilize that co uh, the, the function within it, the g of x that we've been looking at, find its derivative, make the substitution, okay, and then find the, uh, find the value for the integral using the substitution. In the case of the indefinite integral, we're gonna substitute back in our original function, and for the case of the definite integral, we'll just uh, transform our bounds, and it'll make it a lot easier for us to actually um, do this work, all right? So this wraps up the work with the substitution rule.